Amen. How many of you love surprises? I have a surprise for you today. <laughs> and uh, I'm excited to have my friend, my brother, from another mother in another country. But before he comes to minister to us, this week or the week that has gone past, I took a prayer retreat and I went to the mountain at the Heaven's Gate three nights and I was praying, of course, for many issues, but much more praying for you. And have a, such a great breakthrough church. And you watch. There are things that are going to happen in your life. And I told you as they happen to me. They will be happening to you. And the Lord has put it in my heart. To be. At least on a monthly basis. I will be going. For a few days. Just to take a prayer retreat. And I want to keep that word. That on a monthly basis. I will make it very very consistent. And if possible, I want to invite some of you to be going with me. Let's go there. By the time we are coming down from the mountain, remember that time when Mo Moses was praying and he was lifting up his hands and Joshua was battling down there? That's what we ought to do. Because for your... Listen, the times you are living in, for your business to succeed, for your children to grow well, for your marriage to hold... You have to invest in prayer. And there's no other language the devil understands other than spiritual battle. So you've got to battle it spiritually. Amen? And so, kindly, let's be part, part of this. So when I was in the mountain praying and I was praying for the service and all that, the Lord has had put a word in my spirit. Then on Friday, Brother Nabimanya calls me and he says, there is a word. You know the way Jeremiah says, burning in my bones. Eh? And I knew it's because I'd waited on the Lord. Amen? So our brother has a word particularly for this church. And you are not here by accident. I can guarantee you that. Perhaps some of you thought, oh, I was just invited. You are not invited. The Lord brought you here. The steps of a righteous man are ordered of God. And so it is with great joy I bring this man of God from Uganda, Kampala. He's married, happily married, with three daughters and a wonderful son. Man of God, come and take it from here. God bless you. Hallelujah. Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one who spoke in the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3, and he spoke to Moses and said, remove your shoes because the place where you stand is holy ground. You, O oh God, are the owner of heaven and earth. We are only but your children. This afternoon, Lord God, uh, this morning, Lord God, we pray that your servants will receive that which you deposited into my heart with joy. And they will take it for your glory because it is by your power that I'm bringing it to you, to these your people. We thank you and we honor you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I love Jesus because I oh, praise the Lord. Good morning. How has it been? <laughs> I was going already. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Yes, as George says, as Brother George said, I, by the way, let me start with the first, uh, the first sign that I saw in this service here. I came in and I started praying briefly. I wanted to join, uh, somebody was worshipping here. I wanted to join in to worship, and uh, when I raised hands, I thought I would raise them for a minute. And then uh, the Lord spoke to me and said, as it was in Joshua chapter 8. Do you want to open this Bible? As it was in Joshua chapter 8, uh, it would be verse uh, around, uh, around 18. You want to read that? When they were fighting against I, the story of I is when they had been defeated because of the sin of Achan. You remember, Bible readers, you remember they had taken over Jericho and they had a bit become proud. They said, after all, for I is a smaller thing. Just take a few people. Little did they know that one of them the, in their midst had actually taken the, the, deposit, the, the things that had been devoted. And they eradicated I because they had been beaten in the first uh, attempt. Anyway, so when I was here, there, the Lord imparted unto me that as it was when I asked Joshua to raise up the javelin. Is that where he raised the javelin? Yeah. Yeah, okay, it's there. Yeah? Stretch out the spear. The other, other verse version say javelin. That's what I had myself. Javelin. As it was when I asked my servant Joshua to raise up the javelin. So raised his hands as a javelin to these people at the well. And I'm grateful because as it was, he was being defeated. He was, uh, when he did, the, the immediately the ambushes were laid and, and I was beaten. And in verse 26, do you want to go there? It must be 26. In verse 26, the Bible says, because Joshua's javelin did not go down. Isn't it? For Joshua did not draw back, yes, the hand that held his javelin, eh? until he had destroyed all who lived in I. I want to bring it to you that you will be stronger. Amen. Hallelujah. And of course, Brother George shared uh, uh, Exodus 17. You remember the hands of Moses. That is from verse 8, if you want to read there as well. You remember whenever Moses' hands were up, they were winning. Hallelujah. I bring to you the word that was uh, put to me uh, uh, recently. And I told Brother George that, uh, look, I don't know whether I can stomach it longer. Because I don't have time. The, the next weekends I see are very busy. And then travels and then family, as you know. Then I said, if it is possible, this Sunday. It was Friday. And so he said to me, uh, just come. If it is the word of God, we will welcome it. May the Lord count it for you. When I come to minister before God, I don't, I think I have told you this before, I become, well, I become changed into another thing. In as much as I have some dignities that I hold in this world, in as much as I have some designations that I hold in this world, in as much as I have suits that I wear that look a little bit good, in as much as I have a status in society. They call me some HR director somewhere. In as much as I am family head and I have a wife and children, in as much as they can see me, they know that they have gained what they have gained because I don't make qualms with the spirit of God. So when the Holy Spirit takes over, don't, don't judge me. Because <laughs> you know, you may start saying, this man, he comes in and he starts saying, no, no, no. Just, just, just thank God. You know, in First Samuel chapter ten, mm, in First Samuel chapter ten, the Bible says opens by saying that then, uh, ta, 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 please Jesus help me, that then Samuel got a flask of olive oil and he poured it on the head of Saul, so, so, and he told 
told him. He kissed him, by the way. And he sent him out and said, ah, Hasn't the Lord anointed you ruler of his inheritance? And he says, When you leave me today, you will go and you reach a tree called Tabor, the great tree of Tabor. When you reach, before you reach there anyway, you will meet two men. These two men will, be, will meet you. And when they meet you, they will, be go, they, they will speak to you about the donkeys you are looking for. They will tell you, to, they will say, your father, your donkeys, the donkeys that you are looking for have actually been found, isn't it? But now your father, who was Kish, you remember Kish had sent him to look for the donkeys. Huh? And Kish now is no longer worried about the donkeys. He's not thinking about them, but he's worried about you. He's saying to himself and worried, what, will, what is happening to my son? What shall I do about my son? When you live there, the Bible says, you will then meet at the great tree of Tabor. That is what had come into my spirit earlier. At that great tree of Tabor, you rest there a little bit. But then there will be three men going to worship. They will be going to be there to do worship. And when they will meet you, they will meet you at that point of the great tree of Tabor. Which means that there is a place and position that you need to be for God to meet with you. And then when, he, when they meet you there, who look, they will be having, one of them will be carrying three goats. They will not give you the goats. Another one will be carrying three loaves of bread. Oh, and another one will be carrying a, a skin of wine. They will give you two loaves of bread, which please take. They will not give you the goats. They will not give you the skin of wine. And when you have taken those two loaves of bread, proceed. These are the instructions that Samuel was giving. So proceed. And when you proceed, go now to another place. And another place is called, I wish I would recall these things, but this is, this is scripture. And when you, wear, you go, you will now go to another place. And when you reach that place, it will be heading, uh, I think, to, do, to the outpost, to the, or to the uh, outpost, isn't it, of the Philippia, of the, of Philist of the Philistine. And when you reach there, you will meet a procession of prophets. And when you reach them, and when you, they find you, they will actually be prophesying. And they will be chanting things by playing harps and lyres and tambourines. And when they chant with you, when they chant, they will be prophesying. And then you will prophesy along with them. And the Spirit of God will come heavy upon you. That should be verse 6. Ah, and they will come heavy upon you. And when it comes heavy upon you, ah, you will be changed into another person. Verse 7 says that when these signs have happened, do whatever your hand finds to do because the God will be with you. Is that how it is? Yes. The Bible is the father of everything that you are looking for in the world. So when you see me changed into another person, that is why. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because because when he comes, he changes you into another person. Hallelujah. Open with me the Bible and uh, I show you the things that the Lord put into my spirit. Hallelujah. Chapter 4 of the book of John. Do I read or what is the custom here? I read. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he, laid, he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Seca. Near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. 
Jacob's well was there. Hmm. There is a well here, like the well church. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired as he was uh, from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. Praise the Lord. When the Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples go, had gone into town to buy uh, food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can I get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water wearing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming there to draw, here to draw water. He told her, go, call your husband and come back. <laughs> ah, okay. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right. When you say you have no husband, the fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you have now is not your husband. This woman was a man eater. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, you have had five husbands. You have had five men or husbands? Okay, five husbands. And the man you have now is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I have seen that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor Jerusalem. Like we are worshipping the other way. Mm -hmm. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For those are the kind of worshippers the God seeks God is spirit and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now verse 25, the Bible says that the, the woman said, I know that the Messiah call, called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain to us everything. Then Jesus declared, I the one speaking to you, I am he. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless the reading and the content of your word for the glory of your kingdom in the name of Jesus. The Lord put it on to me heavily. And I say heavily because I saw it heavily. That you need one on one. Actually, the, 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 the thing I saw was one on one with Jesus. You need to have a one-on-one -on -one moment with Jesus. So for those of you Christians who like taking notes, take, which is good, the title would then be one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. I told you my method is contextualizing scripture so that you don't go out and you are still into hazy atmosphere about a man who came and preached about the Samaritan woman and the Samaritan woman becomes a Samaritan woman who picks one verse and then jumps at it and yells and says, bring a seat. No, no, no. No, no, no. 
I give you contextualization of scripture so that you go home rich. So I want to contextualize this scripture in the book of John by going back and forth in the word. Then I will come back to this script, of course, because that is what I saw. The book of John opens in John chapter 1 with God, with God describing Jesus as the word. You know, you know it. Every Christian knows that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and he was with God in the beginning. The Bible says he came into that which, uh, unto that which was his own, and his own accepted him not. But those who did accept him, he gave the power to become children not born of a husband's will or parents' decision, but children born of. Okay? John chapter 1 introduces Jesus as the owner, as the word. Everything, by the way, in there, the Bible says, everything was made for him and with him. There is nothing that was made without him that has been made. The reason I fathom with you people is, is, is I see, I actually don't know what happened with, with this church. Because me, I, 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 as I told you, my ministry is prayer. I, I, I have no space for other things, by the way. I get, I get scared. I can't sing like uh, Eric Mutuma here. I, yeah, I can't. I pray for you. That's why I know your name. Yeah, because I, I can sing and then you, you hate songs. Yeah, let us, let us walk into the anointings that we have. Yeah, because the man comes here and he sings and says, even me, I can't sing. No, 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 no. If you can't sing, can't sing. <laughs> so the reason I, I was diverting a little, the reason I, I, I get, I think that's even why the reason, the, that's, that's why the Lord gives me your messages. The reason is that I close eyes and see you. I see you, Amish, and I pray. I see you, Eric. I see Eric and Julie. I see these names. I see David. I see Sheila. I see, I see George. I see these people, Regina, Kiari, where is she? I see these people. I see them. I see Josephine, Linda. I see these people. I see Anne. I see everyone in here. And I pray bombarding things. I see Esther. I see Eddie. I see some people even who have visited while I'm here. Isaac and whoever come, come out. I see them. James and Jeru. This, where are these names? Where are they? I pray when they come, I broke things. Maybe, maybe things could have come to you and I broke them. Because me, I have, I have resolved to battle the enemy until I go to see Jesus. So I don't miss words. You just tell me your names. Tell me. I will battle. Paka. Yeah. And I have testimonies about my battles and successes. So I don't come here to just bring theory here, theory, theory here, no. So my ministry is, is prayer. It's not singing, it's not chanting things. No. No. <laughs> yeah. By the way, when I'm, when I'm praying, I sing. I sing to God because him he can he, he can he can bear <laughs> because he can bear my discord. <laughs> yeah, that one can bear it. <laughs> but, but I visited the church and the guy went there and says, Oh, the Lord has anointed us to sing. These days he went he walked on my on my throat. Then he came in front and oh my god. Yeah. Just tell Eric Mutuma to sing for you. That is where he is anointed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we are in John, John what? We are in one? Yes, we are still in one. Huh? So he comes, he comes, and then uh, he speaks about the word and how the word was with God and how the word was God. And he goes into and everything was made through him and for him. Even the beautiful voices you have, he, you are made by him. They are coined to serve ministry. In chapter 2 of the book of John, the Bible introduces a, a party, a wedding banquet that happened in Cana. And Jesus was invited together with his disciples. They were invited, meaning that there is a place you must invite Jesus. 
you who was born in your own religion and you see there is there are people who I preach for, I preach to, and they say, ah, ah we have our own religions. Okay. It means you have not yet invited Jesus. Jesus is not a religion. Jesus is the Lord. I am speaking to you about Jesus. There is a guy, he was 81 years. I went to preach in my village. I, I do that often as well as much as I get time. I carry Bibles in, 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 in boxes and I distribute and I preach. And so we were there preaching in that village. And this old man came. Church of Uganda, the equivalent of uh, eh, SEK, yeah, equivalent of SEK, came to me hobbling. Of course, at 81, you must be hobbling. <laughs> Some of us, of course, we are, we are metals. We don't hobble. But you know, it may be, it's sausage, I don't know what. So, he comes, he comes, oh, my son, you preach very well. Preach very well. I said, have you been saved, Mzee? Because the time is going. He was in the sunset years, of course. Then he told me, ah, no, you know, for me, <laughs> for me, I, I, I am a pillar of the, of the SEK. Whatever equivalent. They called them Menyomyo in, in Uganda. That I'm a pillar. I said, Jesus is not, a, is not knowing that pillarhood. Jesus wants you to accept him as Lord. And he looked at me and says, my son, now you're a small boy. You can't tell me about Jesus. I've been there before. I said, but you are you you have been told bad funny stories about you. So I turned because you know the sort of Jesus doesn't respect you in the edge at that point. I said, because I've been knowing him, he had he had been into alcohol and all these things. When you meet Jesus, I told him first, first, those Peter who fall down and he goes into the heart, he takes over alcohol. I said, Oh, okay. He takes over alcohol. He replaces it with the spirit of God. He takes over those women that, that probably you, you have been yearning to see and he replaces it with the spirit of God. He says, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> the, the, then I said, but you know, the Lord is giving you a chance. Accept him and not a religion. If you do not, I have no words for you. Then he says, well, well, but I'm a, I am a Peter. And then I heard that after two months, he collapsed. I don't know whether he had accepted the Lord. John, chapter 2, so he comes into the religious setting of, of a party and a wedding. With all those pillars there, those vellos with wines and all these things. In fact, their wine had run out. So he says, okay, fine. Let me identify with them and give them what they like. So he made, he turned water into, that was the first but remember, remember what I started with in that, uh, uh, in that dialogue of 1 Samuel 10. I don't know why the Lord brought it to me. There are, are things that the Lord gives you and things that he does not give you. Saul was commanded to be given two loaves of bread. He was not commanded to be given on the skin of wine or the goats. The Bible does not mean words about things that happened anywhere. They even speak, you know, the Bible speaks about a hopeless boy who raped the sister, you remember? The Bible speaks everything. They did not tell us in that chapter 2 of the book of John that people got drunk. So you hear, you find them drunk. I have battled in my villages. You, they are drunk. I said, even Jesus made it at, at Cana. <laughs> he's talking to you when he's like falling down. Even Jesus made it at, at Cana. <laughs> and I look at them and, and, I, and I go slowly so that they understand. When they fail to understand, then you hit them hard. <laughs> Chapter 2. He makes, he makes wine and they drink and they are and you remember the story, oh, you have preserved the good wine into the, at the end of the ceremony. In chapter 3 of the book of John, the Bible introduces a scholar hmm, called Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a teacher of the law. That profession of yours, Josephine, asking questions, 
they are trained to ask questions. I don't have, I don't have good news. I don't have good memories with them, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except uh, the sister who, 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 has, uh, who has known the Lord. <laughs> yeah, because one of them wrote me a big letter. They write, they write one pager with only punctuation marks. <laughs> only. And I was struggling with rent at that point. Rent was on my neck. And I had, I had known the Lord, Sister Nelly. I had a big Bible, huge thing. I believed, I believed that you rise, I hit you with a big sword. <laughs> and, those, and those traits have stayed with me somehow. <laughs> so everything was Bible, 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 and rent was not paid. <laughs> so these guys wrote me. <laughs> those lawyers. <laughs> those guys wrote to me and says, be ye, be ye stand warned that <laughs> they have things, my God. <laughs> My God, how do you read those things? <laughs> by instruction of our client, the National Housing and Construction Corporation, by statute number 17, clause 4, subsection 1 of the laws of the Republic of Uganda, here to, here to constitute it. <laughs> eh, my goodness me. <laughs> do we therefore call you? And give you 14 days without fail upon which you will pay with our costs. <laughs> and the whole page is done, punctuated with corons and some coron. <laughs> and then full stop at the end there. And they sign very, they get a guy, <laughs> Karanja, they get a guy who signs like the whole thing. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so that even, even the signature, even the signature intimidates you. <laughs> So, so now, <laughs> eh, by the way, George, I think I told you that story. I got that letter. The Bible, the big Bible became small. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have good memories with, with, with the profession, but I know you are good people. <laughs> so now I took that paper and my wife said, so, so what shall we do? You need, you need these women in the house. They are angels. Yeah. So I said, what shall we do? I said, hey, honey, you greet me first. He <laughs> 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 said, but the letter is here. Ha! <laughs> My friend, for me, the story of prayer started with problems. I will not come here and post you that God anointed me to be a prayer warrior. And no, 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 <laughs> uh -uh, Eric, <laughs> no, it was out of fire. So I got my Bible that night. You can imagine the environment in the house. So I got that paper and put it on the altar. And I called upon Isaiah 37 when uh, Hezekiah received the report of war from Sennacherib. And I hit it hard at 3 a.m. And my wife checked on at about 5 a.m. And I, I was far away. I was in prayer, hitting the letter. <laughs> but that week, miracle happened. Oh, we serve a living God. The, the employer I was working for calculated areas from the time I had joined because they had retained me like on a temporary position. And then they confirmed me and paid me areas of about two years. And I said they will see me <laughs> with their signatures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When you get when you get one on one with Jesus, my friend, the rest are, they become nothing. So I said, let me wait for this thing to go onto my bank account. Even that one, every time for me a miracle was in the hold, I would not eat a thing. I was an emaciated guy. I was like that gym guy who was here. <laughs> yeah. And I love you, brother. You are very bold. Where are you? Oh, here he is. You, you guy, let me pray for you. But I won't pray that you get weight eh? because weight is not. 
Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham. Guys, you, yeah, you, you stretch hands towards this man. First of all, thank you, Lord, for healing his uh, back. And we pray that the boldness for which he has stood before you will be recognized by your angel of Psalm 34, verse 7, that will encamp around him forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so I was that, that's, I was, well, for me, maybe he's even bigger than me, I don't know. But you know, that time I was like a skin, what do you call a, sti a skinny thing. There used to be stick men in, when we were schooling. Yeah, I was, like a, I was like a stick man. Because I did not find time to eat every time. My, my wife had a quarrel with me. said, but people will ask us. They will say we are sick of AIDS. <laughs> you remember AIDS, HIV AIDS used to get people and, and shrink them. Yes. Yeah. Because, but I said, I don't eat when these letters are here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, they paid me arias. And when I, I prayed until I said, maybe the, you know, you remember in Acts of Apostles chapter 12, when, uh, when um, this man left the prison, Peter, you remember? Until he left, he could, he could actually think he was dreaming until he says, now I know. So I said, eh, this person young, Nikangaria Barua, Nikangaria myself, Nikangaria how I can't imagine it. Na iyo pese kakuja kwa account. And I went to them. Yeah. And I said, you, next time don't write these things. You can just call me. Don't write. Yeah. 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 You, you, imagine you are paying a whole like legal officer or assistant to draft that court, court statutes and what. For a small guy here in block 14, block C1, Bogorobi. Ah, pana. Nikambia, so how much is your money? And I paid national housing for, with, with an attitude. Pew. So I don't have good, uh, I diverted. I don't have good memory with lawyers, yes, but Nicodemus was one of them. Nicodemus comes and speaks questions because he comes to the Lord with a mind of asking how is it that you can do these things you are doing you have just turned water into wine you simply can't it can't be that you are doing these things without God how because because and you you don't want to blame them they are trying to ask questions it is good yeah, because you also don't want to follow like a pig and the man said Jesus says I tell you the truth, you cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you are born again. Now, every mind and the law that was in Nicodemus died there. <laughs> Nicodemus, however, remember we are on one-on-one -on -one with? Because remember, now Jesus had come on a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. Nicodemus with Nicodemus. Now, Nicodemus has now come on one-on-one. -on -one. There is no one. I have read the Bible. I don't know how many times. By the way, I have read this Bible and read it inside out. I read it from cover to cover every year. I am now reading it again. I am in the book of Judges. That is how I am. But I have never seen a place where Jesus met somebody and the somebody went back disappointed. Never. No way. They came to him when they were sick and they got. They came to him when they were leprous and they got. They came to him when they were demon possessed and they got. There is deliver. There is no one. Your job is to go one on one with Jesus. One such a kind of person was Nicodemus now. We are still, you remember, we are not yet into our script of John 4. You remember? Now, Jesus, now, now the mind of, of our friend Nicodemus gets lost when the, the born again thing is. He says, but how can it be that then a person can go back to their mother's womb and be born? <laughs> And Jesus said, but you know, you can, you can only be, you have to be born both of the spirit and of the flesh. Flesh gives birth to, uh, birth to flesh 
and spirit gives birth to spirit. The things I speak to you are spirit. And this man now is confused the more and the more. But you don't blame him because he was carnal. But, and I will show you in scriptures as we go on, from then on, Nicodemus changes. Nicodemus is seen actually defending our Lord Jesus after. Uh, I, think, I think, let me look for those scriptures so that, yeah, that, that will be important. So that what are the results of being one on one? Hallelujah. Now, Nicodemus is, uh, you will find him again in John chapter 7. Uh, read for me verse 50 and 51. Okay, what does he say? Nicodemus, who had a very good, who had gone to Jesus earlier, uh huh? And who was one of their own number, he, he actually argued with them because they were disturbing. Yes, Brother George, you can read. He says, Does our law condemn? Uh -huh. Does our law judge a man before it hears him? Do you see? And knows what he's doing? Do you see? Now, because he had one on one with Jesus, he's using now his profession to defend him. Huh? What about when there was, uh, you remember when they were contending with the body, for the body of Jesus to go and bury it? In John chapter 19. Please read verse uh, 38 to 40. John 19. The, the, so, uh, I want to show you that when you come to Jesus one on one, things change. You are coming asking questions, then things change. What is there? What is there now? Uh huh. After this, uh, Joseph of Arimathea, yes. being a disciple of Jesus Christ, mm. but secretly, yes. for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. Uh -huh. And Pilate gave him permission. Uh -huh. So he came and took the body of Jesus. And Nicodemus, he was accompanied by this man, who at first <laughs> came to Jesus by night, yes. also came bringing a mixture of mire, Very good. aloes, and a hundred pounds. That's enough, my brother. You see, then the man has already changed. Amen. He has had the one-on-one -on -one with. Yeah. Yeah. In chapter 4 of the book of John, let's go. In chapter 4 of the book of John, as you know, is when now we are going to, to talk about. That I can jump now, isn't it? Because we are coming to that Samaritan woman. In chapter 5 of the book of John, we now are encountered by a man who was at the pool of Bethsaida for 38 years. Woo! That's, that's heavy. That's a long time. Some of you who even have babies here are not 38 yet. I doubt. Yeah. 38 is a long time. Yeah, people are presidents at, at, at 30. Mm. 38 hard-working men have even grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> some, of those, some of those pharaohs, <laughs> some of those pharaohs who started working at around 19, 20. Yeah. But now imagine at 38 people have grandchildren, you are at the pool. Incapacitated there. And Jesus just found him and says, what? He just said, please, <laughs> do you want to get well? Whenever I want to go in. And when the water is stirred, somebody else comes in. Then 10 years pass. And 28 pass. <laughs> and 38 now is here. And Jesus said, just go, just go. Don't bore me. <laughs> Pick up your bags and go. Yeah, because at that point, my friend, at the you are in one place, you must be smelling bad. Yeah. You need to study. You, 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 study, you, 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 you the scholars of the Bible, study that guy. That guy, did he have a rule? So he just said, my God, my God. Hey, hey, go. your bags and go. You have had a one-on-one -on -one with me, now it's enough. Go. <laughs> yeah. But when he had a one-on-one -on -one with him, he became yeah. He carried his mat, my friend. And it was a Sabbath. And the people who are yearning for Sabbath and uh, defending Sabbath, I have battled with Sabbath people, my goodness. By the way, they have scripture. Yeah. The 
can be very difficult. But you know, for me, I told them, God is spirit. And they don't believe in the, in the impact of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So the day becomes a day. The day becomes a day. The day becomes a day. Hey. So he says, but the man who healed me says, carry your mat and go. Who is this? They started asking questions. They are like Nicodemus. But he had had one on one. And he picked his mat and went. He was healed at that moment. In chapter 6 of the book of John, let me, let me chat, chat it over up to, let's say, maybe 10, maybe 12, maybe 10. Yeah? Let me chat it up to 10 so that I can come go to the script. So in chapter 6 of the book of John, oh, Jesus now comes and speaks as the bread of life. He feeds the 5,000, you remember? And he says, I am the bread of life. In John chapter 6, verse 35. And he tells them how he is the bread of life. In chapter 7 of the book of John, he goes to the feast of tabernacles. And when he's at the feast of tabernacles, he preaches to them. They were actually waiting for him. Hallelujah. They, were ask, they said, where is he? Those who are asking where is he have not had one on. <laughs> and he started speaking to them, teaching them. And when he started teaching them, ah, they said, but where did this man get all this knowledge without being schooled? And he said, my knowledge, the one who teaches me is the father who sent me. Ah, in chapter 8 of the book of John, let's, 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 let's go through this. In chapter 8 of the book of John, we are introduced to him speaking now to a woman who has been caught in the act of. And everyone was going to stone her. And the only qualified person who could cast the stone was Jesus. And he says, whoever has not done it, has not sinned before, let him throw the first stone. Meaning that you do not judge people. Let God judge them. Just welcome them and show them your light. The Bible says in 516 of the book of, of Matthew. That let your light shine. So that they see the good that is out there. That is in you. And glorify your father who is in heaven. Just don't judge them. He came to save that which was lost anyway. Yeah. So he says, okay, he started writing down some, some, something down. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I don't know, for some reason I just keep, because of my upbringing in salvation, I just keep meeting guys of, really, of different faiths, and we, and we chat, and we talk, and we, and we get knowledge of things. So in one of those chats with the Muslims, they said, they said our prophet was in school. But there is nothing that shows that he was was. And we told him, but what about, what, what about when he was writing in the sun? <laughs> he was writing. <laughs> so what about that? <laughs> and you know, for them small things now, they become like the condemners, they get lost. <laughs> anyway, so, so he, he, he turns, he said, let him throw. The, uh, first. This woman who was then before with problems of from Stuart and everything, now met the Lord. One on and went back whole. Jesus says, woman, now that you have been healed, go and stop your life of sinning. Sin no more. Okay? In chapter 9, that one also was one on one. In chapter 9 of the book of John, we meet now this man who was born blind. Mm. And the disciples ask, uh, you can go to nine, yeah? And the disciples ask, Rabbi, who sinned? Is it, by the way, Brother George cited it here. Who sinned? Is it this man or is it his parents? And Jesus said, no, no, neither this man nor his parents, but this one happened so that the work of God might be manifested into his. And indeed, it was manifested. 
And when he told him to go wash and what, and he became well, and the guy says, the one who healed me says that I go. And you remember, he says, oh, I was uh, blind, but now I can see. Those people, the naysayers were already wondering, how could this happen? But the, the reason was he had had one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. Let us conclude with John chapter 10, then I come to my script. In John chapter 10, ladies and gentlemen, we are introduced to him as telling us how he is the shepherd and how his sheep know him and how they hear his voice and how when he speaks, they are like sheep in the den. They know who he is. And in verse 7 of the book of John chapter 10, he tells us that he is the gate. And in verse 9 also, he tells us that he's the gate. And in verse 10, he says, ah, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I, I, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. That is the reason why you need to have Jesus one on one. Yeah. So, this John, let's, let's now stop on that contextualization. Go now to the John chapter 4 and we speak about this Samaritan woman. Hallelujah. The Samaritan woman was simply a non-believer. I've called her a man eater, isn't it? This woman would simply woo men and carry them home. And I don't know for what, we are not told for what reason they would leave him. We leave her, sorry, sorry. We would leave her. But what we are told, she had counted the fifth one. And was coming to fetch water and probably take it back to the sixth one to chase her away. To chase him away. Yeah. Maybe she was a con woman. <laughs> anyway. So this woman was simply an unbeliever. What distinguishes this woman from the many prostitutes that you find in the Bible? By the way, I am going to shock you. Be, 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 be careful about condemning prostitutes. When God turns them around, they are another thing. Oh, Rahab helped the Israelites. In Joshua chapter 2, you remember? Rahab is recorded in the genealogy, my friend. Seriously. Judah, in Genesis chapter 38, do you remember? In Genesis chapter 38, remember Judah had had three sons and two of them, and one passed on and had had this wife called Tamar. And then he told the second one to sleep with Tamar so that he well, can bear children with her. And this guy, you remember, for the purpose of not giving birth to children that were not mm, his, and he would do, put semen on the side when they were, in the, where, where were lying together. And that, the intention, displeased God, you remember? And he slew him. And now Judah promised Tamar that this other third one will grow up and take her own. You remember? But she said, he said, but go back to your people now. Because I can't stay here with you. This <laughs> is serious. Eh? <laughs> go. And she goes back to her people. Now, she heard that Judah was making an expedition uh, there. And she removed her widow clothes. And she put a prostitute to one. <laughs> Beware of prostitutes. Hey, I fear prostitutes. <laughs> so she put there a prostitute thing. And this man, Judah, comes <laughs> and says, I, I, I will give you a young goat. A young goat or a young cow? I don't know. A young goat, eh? Yeah, if you sleep with me. He says, what, what, what sign will you give me? He said, he gave her some things. You remember those things? They went and did what they did, but God is amazing. The day
day they did it is the day the pregnancy entered. Mm -hmm. Which means, which shows you that God goes beyond your actions and things and, and shows you what intention is looking for to teach you some things. Yeah. So don't, don't rush to judge Judah. Don't. But Judah says, okay, now take this goat, send them an emissary, da, 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 take this goat, and take, take it there. I'm trying to, to, to finish that so that I tell you the process. <laughs> Although God needs to help you from a spirit of rust, never have those things. Anyway, so this man says, oh, but there has never been a shrine prostitute here. He brings back and says, ah, leave her alone. And, and then they tell her, three months after, she declares a pregnancy, and Judah knows, is God to know, says, bring her here. And we stone her to death. Do you see the difference between the people and Jesus? Jesus, in John chapter 8, has shown us that when he met one-on-one -on -one with this other woman, he, he declared life. This one is already declaring death. Bring her here for stoning. And the woman clever this, my friend, he, fear process. Says, I am pregnant by the owner of these things. Do you know them? And the man says, oh my God, <laughs> she's more righteous than I. And that is why now Judah remains my friend, a friend of God. He does accept his sin and says, he is, she is more righteous than her. Don't kill her. And she gives birth to who? Perez. Perez is in the genealogy. Oh my God. Will you believe this? <laughs> Don't judge these people. Pray for them. They could be they, they could be some, some some people put there to test your faith. There's one I meet at when I when I'm driving home. You know, like you are working late and then you are going but by there's a time I was uh, I, I, I think I was going to around towards ten o'clock. And I find her there. You know they have these these stiletto things. <laughs> so, so as I was studying, he says, hi. Well, I said, my goodness, me. I could, uh, I could, uh, I, said, I, I was debating, do I cast out this spirit now? Or, do, or, or people will be, will be straight. Because they, they can find you there with your KXs. <laughs> this, 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 this diplomat in town who, 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 who is seen with prostitutes. <laughs> But, but I had said, do I jump out and cast this demon? But then my heart said, ah, ah leave this process alone. <laughs> so I jumped. I, ju I mean, I continued. But I went in my, in my, in my balcony I, because now I could see her. And I said, may she not appear there again. <laughs> Let her go and prostitute somewhere else. <laughs> and I've never seen her again. <laughs> By the way, me, I declare things. <laughs> Prostitutes should go to hide in other places where you will not find them. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, anyway, anyway. So so be careful about prostitutes. Judah entang was entangled, but well, the sin was cleansed because the Lord was sending a message. This particular one in Samaria, who we are discussing had an opportunity of a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. She was not a believer. And she said, you know what we read, you just say that we must worship from Jerusalem. And Jesus said, first of all, he says, go, go and bring your husband. I have been asking myself in this scripture when the Lord showed it to me. Why did Jesus ask her to go and bring the husband? Why didn't Jesus ask her to go and bring a jar? Please, please think with me. Jesus did not say, go and bring so and so here. Or, because we need more water, bring another pail or jar. Or, no. Jesus said, go bring your husband. Of course, he knew that there was no husband. But, and the woman says, I have no husband. Let us stop there and ask ourselves. The, the, 
key thing that Jesus was looking for is to teach you woman, to teach you woman, to teach you woman, that there is a blessing in having a husband. Mm. Please, and let me tell you, I can pray until daybreak, but I pray that women get husbands. Yes, because there is a totality that you get in that identity. You know, Jesus is son of God, but he was aligned to a family of Joseph and Mary. Because there is something significant with man and wife. Go bring your husband. These days we have uh, women, my friend. They are in town. But, well, I don't speak about the Nairobi, so I don't get problems here. They are there in Kampala. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't need a husband. What do I need a husband for? Oh, okay. Yeah, we preach and find them there. Yeah, it's talking about husbands. What do I need in a husband? Oh, okay. <laughs> really? And then she turns uh, 40. And then she starts uh, thrashing people, I mean, money around and buying some young boys. And the boys frustrate them like anything. Then you, for you, for us, we are henchmen. We don't go anywhere. So at 40, you are, you are, for you, you are here in your 50s, you are still seeing her. You come and say, sister, you still need a husband. Uh, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, you know, the, now the voice changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I listened to you some while ago. Yeah, yeah, I think you make a point. Oh, oh, oh. Why? Because it was decreed that man shall not live alone. Let me tell you, this Jesus is God. Go and bring your husband. <laughs> Don't bring me Jericans. <laughs> yeah. Bring me your husband. <laughs> please, please. And that is why my friends who come closer to me the first thing I say, where is your husband? I don't have her or he. I don't have him. I said, don't worry. We will pray. For me, I have pushed myself to pray for these people. They will get husbands. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. You are not yet 60, you will be okay. Even at 59. Even at 59.8 and go in the market. Just change your dress code a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If they haven't looked at how you look like, change a little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, you know I, 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 grow, I grew into a, a yearning for people to, to, be, to be well. That's my heartbeat. Yeah. There's one I told my friend. We are praying, but even you help me. I think I told you. Even you help me. Please change that dress code. Change your wardrobe. Just give the things that are there to the poor. You have, en you have enough money. You have enough money to change that wardrobe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, she has changed. I see her these days. Oh, beautiful. And I told her, I said, my friend, now, now, now people can talk. So, so, so you have to be, because this woman came to the world, that's where she met Jesus. You must position yourself. Even as we pray, you position yourself. You remember we chatted about Rebecca, how she was going to, 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 to feed the, the cows of the father. To, you know, she, you, there must be a positioning you do. We push prayer. In Exodus chapter 17, of course, and in, in Joshua 8, we push the prayer, but you also help us. Yeah. There's another one from our church in Kampara. I am addressing women now so that you come closer to Jesus. There's one who said, uh, look, uh, you have been, I, I, I discussed with you the one who was, men were, working, were looking for people who are, who are prayer warriors. And she positioned herself into prayer. 
You remember? Yeah. And as we talk, they are married. You remember? Yeah. Because she knew. She knew where to. You must be clever. She knew where to press the button. So when the guys would be coming for the morning, morning glory, she would be there in our area. Konto Yoruba kata Yoruba. Ah, konto Yoruba kata sha konto Yoruba. Then they say, but pastor, how? But if this one, if you want to talk to her, how will how will, <laughs> how will you even find her? She's she's always in. Hmm? <laughs> and she had a small car like this, so she she finished. She would then then remove remove the remove the prayer shoes, and she puts her thing. Those things, those things, you know. Yeah. Then she 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 put you put these things there. If they are the ones that will show will show who you are, yeah. So she so she has a small bag. She put these things. What do you call them? Yeah, yeah. Then she, then she goes. Then this brother says, sister, I heard you praying. So, so can I help you? <laughs> yeah, my friend, the guy is gone. <laughs> yeah, position yourselves. This, but, this, but then there's guys. Wow, you must have wisdom. Don't start talking about, there's the one who we were told. Our pastor in Uganda told us that they said, this man comes to her and says, oh, sister, is it okay if we had a coffee? I say, hey, do you know how old I am, brother? Hey, those are secrets you release after. <laughs> the man has not looked for you for your age. The man has admired you. Kwani, Kwani, maybe we should have a class here for this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Yeah, so so says, oh, so so you mean you mean you are very old. <laughs> so you see now <laughs> you <laughs> if, even before the coffee happened, uh, <laughs> she, she she killed it. <laughs> Maybe at the coffee. <laughs> you, uh, anyway. you see, you see, one on one with Jesus gives you those nuggets of wisdom. The man, the woman who the Samaritan woman now said, I can see that you are a prophet. My God. It, it dawned on me in these scriptures. This woman turned from a man eater kind of thing and became an evangelist. And she went to the whole of Samaria and said, come and see the man who has told me everything I ever did. Could he be the Messiah? Why? Because the impact of your lordship, of the lordship with Jesus cannot leave you the same. It steers power. And the whole of Samaria came and listened to this man now. And when he started teaching them, they said, it is in chapter 4 of the book of John, which is where we are. They said, now we know, not because you told us, but because even us, we have had it for ourselves. Hallelujah. And the disciples came back and found Jesus talking to this Samaritan woman. And they said, he's talking to a woman. And they said, excuse me, what is this? And they said, okay. Do you want something to eat? He says, I have food to eat that you do not know about. John chapter 4, verse 32. Let me tell you, the world church, one-on-one -on -one with Jesus turns you into a new creation. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, as you know, the Bible says that he who is in Christ Jesus has become a new the old has gone, the new has come. I tested being in the Lord many, on many occasions, of course, as I have told you before. But I, I, I tested being in the Lord when people tried to bewitch me and they could not. And my maid is the one, who, somehow God makes you know. And my maid is the one who told me, says, but these neighbors have a shrine. 
and when you, whenever you go out, they chant. And they speak Uganda, which she knows. And they were saying that by the time you reach in, you reach in Tinda, in Tinda is one of those, whatever, like you have here, Haringham, whatever. By the time he reaches in Tinda, there will be thunder. And it will hit him dead. Eh, okay. And, and for, for sure, somehow there was uh, some, some rain. It was about to, 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 it was about to rain. And there were rumblings of thunder. Ba, 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 ba. So, this, this uh, witch doctor says, Aha, mumeskia yo thunder. Mutaskia sasa jambo. Just put on radio. Atanguka. I tested one on one with Jesus. When she told me, I said, may the Lord forgive them. And I put my hands in the air. May the Lord forgive them. However, if they are children of getting lost, may you deal with me. If, may you deal with them if ever be so severely. You know those scriptures? <laughs> my friend, what happened? Then now they waited for the man to have died on thunder. And I came back majestically. And I came back and they, and, and they were they were now, uh, the, the maid told me they, they were saying, ah, kwani yi muganga ni ndio ndio wongo. Let me tell you, when you get one on one with Jesus, there are things that happen you don't even know how they happen. That's why I want you to get one on one with him. And I would come and you, the Lord has blessed me with those four wheel drives. Then they said, uh, and the, the, then, the, then the Muganga told them, now bring, bring two more cocks, which are, which are white, and they have he, uh, red, red heads. <laughs> because he gives them things which are very difficult to get. Okimpatia, <laughs> immediately. And I said, when they bring the red-headed, <laughs> my Lord Jesus raised the standard. Yeah. When well, I don't know, they went to wherever and, and they got those cocks. <laughs> but I, they was confused. You remember the confusion that the Lord threw into Joshua chapter 10, eh, verse 10. You remember when they were fighting? You want to display it? 10, 10. 10, 10? Joshua 10, 10. Put for me there so that I don't misquote scripture. 10, 10 of the book of Joshua. What does it say? Hallelujah. The Lord threw them into confusion. Very good. That confusion is what then he threw them into. They started hating each other to the limit. And they could not bear being in that locality. And as you talk, I bought their land. <laughs> because they came and said, we can't live here anymore. Do you have some money? Said how much money do you have? I, I, I got them lawyers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I got, by the way, she's also a lady lawyer who I got. I got them. She, a very smart lawyer in Kampala. They are very smart. And I said, and by the way, when these lawyers, ladies, they want to be serious, they can shock you. So this woman said, she said, leave them with me. Then she wrote them that thing. <laughs> with Coron. <laughs> Our client has paid you this day of this month. <laughs> and here by decree, by constitution of the Republic of Uganda, <laughs> that you have by the 30th day of March 2022, 2020 something, whatever it was. And, and they came to me and said, can they give us one? Mother said, the lawyer is the one talking. <laughs> and the lawyer told me, don't allow them even a day. <laughs> they went. They are now not there. And one of them, one of them wanted to fight me now after that, after I had paid. And says, this, he will see me. He's a Rastafarian man. Eh? I said, he said what? He will see me. So he was, he, he, when he was going to consult, he was in, on his bike. He, has a, he had a bike. I think from the man I paid them, he had bought the bike. <laughs> so he was, he was running to go and consult. And he met a truck and it hit his leg off. I don't say this because I prided them, no. But I want to tell you, when you get one-on-one -on -one with Jesus, they, he fights your battles. 
there is no, by the way now the, now the energy to fight me cannot be there because you must be now in some in some you you must be in hospital. now you must look for a, a, a for, for a hospital to help you isn't it you have to go to kenyatta something na national hospital for some he, i've never seen him again why because one on one with jesus creates a whole lot of war and that is what i have brought to you this afternoon and morning let please do whatever you do but get closer to this jesus hallelujah mary magdalene even before you go to mary magdalene do you remember uh zacchaeus in luke chapter 19 you want to go there maybe in luke chapter 19 this man zacchaeus was was well, for lack of words was a corrupt man a, a thief but when he met our Lord Jesus one on one, the Bible says that he's also a child of God for whom Jesus I mean, died and, and Abraham was. You remember? He wanted to see who uh -huh, Jesus was. Now go down. Go down. You will see the scripture where it says this two. This two is a child of. Uh, you see, Jesus was coming that way. Uh -huh. So the kingdom of God has come to your home. You see, you see, he went there. I must come stay at your home this, this this jesus you need him let let jesus remove jesus from the, the wordings of scripture and bring him into the heart you remember in 1423 of the book of john he says that if you believe me and accept me i and my father will come and make our own home within you uh, you let me tell you if you get jesus within you and he, he and his father make, uh, there it is, isn't it? And make their home within you. My friend, come and Moganga, come and somebody hating you, come and somebody doing what? Some of you got dreams, by the way. I got that revelation. And when you are here, you will need to come and we pray together. I, th there are people here who are disturbed by bad dreams. Yeah. You are, imagine, just imagine. Uh, you people, you are late. You are from your farm, Josephine. You have been struggling with this client. Nose. And then now you have this sleep heaven on your head. You have, you have probably prayed or not. And then you put your head down and the huge snake comes here. <laughs> I have seen those people say, See, my God, I, I couldn't sleep. He said, what happened? There was a snake which came. Those things cannot stand from today Amen. in the name of Jesus because you will have one on one with Jesus. Hallelujah. There's one who told me that cows chased me, they chased me, and I was to fall in the ditch. And when I was about to fall, I woke up. I said, I said, Where are the cows coming from? What are the cows? And I said, okay, there is some link there that is, let me tell you, the Lord gives you sleep. I am a prayer man myself. I told you that I, I, I sleep less, but I sleep. And when I sleep is when I see scriptures. And when I see the Lord speaking about people and what he wants to do with them. And when I see, it, it, sleep becomes beautiful. You see a crocodile. <laughs> Imagine a crocodile, which would be an animal, a, a, a thing in water. <laughs> so I saw, I saw there are people disturbed by dreams here. Yeah. So please see me. See me. You may not want to stand up because you it's, it's, uh, might not be looking good. <laughs> but I saw that. <laughs> And the Lord is not a liar. One on one with Jesus. Mary Magdalene. You remember Mary Magdalene who, I, I, I don't know, do you want scriptures or do I discuss this so that, yeah, isn't it? Because you can read them, isn't it? Mary Magdalene had seven demons of prostitution. You remember? And when she came to Jesus, they were removed. From then on, Mary became a new creation. You see Mary now caring for the Lord. 
you see her going at the first person on the wall, on the on the tomb after the when the third day you remember when they met the angel why because one on one with jesus can never never leave you the same may the lord give you an opportunity to see him one on one that is the message that the lord gave me brother george and i know and I fully know that you are here and you need an experience with Jesus one on one. And so we will pray so that you see our Lord. Everything that you are looking for, be it a thought, be it a yearning, it will be solved by a twinkle of an eye because of one on one with Jesus. Allow me to pray for you. Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. The Samaritan woman was a non-believer. She had a one-on-one -on -one with you, Lord Jesus. And she turned into an evangelist. The, that woman, my Lord Jesus, you revealed to me she was completely a woman of getting lost had it not been for the one-on-one -on -one encounter. What I saw, ladies and gentlemen, was that this woman was not discriminated against by Lord Jesus. And Jesus was, given, was giving her time. As it was that Jesus gave time to this woman, may he give it to you so that you see him one on one in the name of Jesus. As it was at the well where she went that Jacob had sunk and as she found a miracle of a new being because of one on one with Jesus. May you receive Jesus one on one in every affair and atmosphere that you are looking for. In the name of Jesus. It is your work. I can see. Oh, listen to this. Thank you, Jesus. I can see some of you are tired of fruitless work. As in you wake up early, you go work, you come back late, you don't find joy at work, and you have no balances in your pocket. You are struggling. That I have seen now, 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 now. And the Bible is saying the medicine is one on one with Jesus. I can see somebody is tired of men. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody is tired of men. And he's saying, I don't need a man. See me after here. Because of a disappointment that happened. The Lord is saying, one on one with Jesus is the answer. I can see somebody asking questions. What is the difference between salvation and religion? difference is that you will have one on one with Jesus in 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 salvation and if you are here and you are not born again please come in front that one I must pray for you so that the anointing of favor will follow you all the days of your life come if you are not born again come and take this anointing of one on one to help you forever in your life that's what I'm hearing yeah Sister, just just kneel down here. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, or oh, you Lord God of Israel, you said that when some that when one sinner returns to you, the, the heavens rejoice. This lady, what's your name? Irene. Irene. Irene has now had a one on one with you. I am declaring by the power of the Holy Spirit 
that Irene has turned into a new creation. In the name of Jesus. Because of the one-on-one -on -one encounter, Irene, listen to me. The Lord is going to show you an amazing things. Those tears that you have shed, you will have tears of joy. Where you are Lord now, Jesus, whom you have found, like it was with the Samaritan woman, you will be a great woman of value. Hey, I can see you have been despised. Where, where, where do you come from? I, I, we will talk, we will talk. So let me, it's not for public. But I'm seeing whatever has shamed you. You will not be shamed anymore Amen. in the name of Jesus. Because he who is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Receive the new in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, receive the glory. For I have passed the word as you gave it to me. Will you kindly come and shield these your people against formations of the enemy. And give them the light that you are in John chapter 8 verse 12. In the name of Jesus. Have peace in the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow, wow. Let's give the Lord another clap. <laughs> Celebrate the Lord. One on one with Jesus. You know, when I was at the mountain, because that word has really confirmed. Yesterday, I attended BBI. And there's this one word that kept on coming. I had it at the mountain, had it yesterday, and today it has been repeated. That what the Lord wants with each one of us is an encounter with him. Everybody say encounter. Because it is a personal experience. To have an encounter with the Lord. I want us to stand up and respond to God's word today. That your heart will have such a yearning and a desire to have an encounter with him. And you know God is a gentleman. He doesn't force. So it's you to come to the Lord. The Bible says, draw near to me and I will draw near. It is you to draw near to the Lord. Can you lift up your hands and talk to the Lord? And say, Lord, I need an encounter with you. I need an experience with you. I need a drawing near. Let your hearts have such a thirst, such a longing to meet with the Lord. And you know what? It will take a sacrifice on your part. You can't be too busy for God. Some of you will need to be taking a day off. You can take a day off to go for a funeral. But can you take a day off to be with the Lord? It will take time for you to say, I'll be sacrificing. I'll take a day off just to be with God. My life cannot continue being the same again. Some of you consider other things as more of an emergency than having a day with God. It will take a sacrifice to have an encounter with the Lord. Something else I want to encourage you, church, to do. Learn to pray the word. For instance, if it's about faith, go to Hebrews chapter 11. And as you are praying every verse, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Dwell on that scripture for five minutes. Lord, I need this kind of faith. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Pray it through. Go to the next one. Okay? By faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Father, help me to offer a sacrifice. 
that's more excellent. Lord, teach me to. By the time you're going scripture after scripture, you have internalized it in your spirit. Your faith will be at another level. Because some of us ask, how do you spend an hour praying? You learn to pray the word. One hour will be so little for you. Because every scripture will come out with a new revelation, with a new revelation, with a new revelation. An encounter with you, God. Can you sing that song as the deer pants for the water? Psalms 42. Let that be the cry of our hearts as the deer pants for the water. So that our lives will be changed, will be transformed. Hallelujah. As the dear pants. allow me to to obey the Holy Spirit I want Pastor Augusta to come the message today was about Samaritan And church, just allow me this. Bianca, please come. Most of us know how Bianca came to church and how she came to know the Lord. And do you know Irene has also come through Bianca? You know the Irene who got saved today? She also came through where is Beatrice? Beatrice. And there was Maureen. Where is Maureen? Beatrice. An encounter Bianca had with Jesus. Just worship the Lord. Just worship the Lord. Allow the Holy Spirit to move. Allow the Spirit of God to move.
church, the Lord rebuking us, especially those of us who have been in the Lord for long. We have forgotten or we have neglected reaching out to the lost souls. The Samaritan woman went out there and told everybody the encounter that she had. The city came and they had an encounter. When was the last time you shared the gospel of Jesus Christ? And the Lord is rebuking us today. God wants us to bear fruit. Fruit that shall remain. And that fruit is not just the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's bringing souls to the kingdom. When was the last time you shared? Whether they get saved or not, that's not your problem. Is your business a testimony? That you'll draw men to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. I want you to ask the Lord for repentance. Go before the Lord and repent. Because we have not been an example. That encounter with Jesus cannot leave you the same. People will admire your life. Let me ask Brother Nabimanya, come and pray for us. We have failed, we have failed. Please come and pray with a burden that God give us a burden for souls. Oh, Shaya Kama Baba. Oh, Rima Kama Mama. Hallelujah. And if you sense perhaps you want to come to the altar and there's something that happens at the altar, you're saying, God, I want to be different. Yes, God, I've failed you in this area. Hallelujah. Please come to the front kneel down here and let's repent before the Lord that yes. God would use us in a Hallelujah. different way. In Jesus name. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, receive the glory. Bring fire unto this your children. Yes, come. Come and respond fire. to the word. Fire come and respond to, to the word your of children God to give them your In the name, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You want to be a true witness I of Christ. I declare oh. that there will be fire yes, in their hearts. Yes, that you be a witness the out witness there. You'll be sharing the there. word without and any fear, oh, without Samaria. any embarrassment. Without any embarrassment. Oh, come on, come on, in the name come on, of come on, Jesus, come on, give come on, come Josephine come on, come on. the breakfast Yes, Lord. I see fire. In I see your fire of, of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Receive Jesus. this fire mm. and go and be a witness. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will be a savior. Amen. You come. Oh, you will ma, see ma, God. Ma, 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 one on one with Jesus. Yes. Oh, receive yes, Jesus. Father. Yes, Father. Receive yes, Father. Jesus. Move by your spirit. Receive Jesus. Move by your spirit. Receive Jesus. Move by your spirit. Move by your power. Oh, I God. repeat this one. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father. Say, oh, Father. Ba, 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 ba. In the name of Jesus, I now accept you. Mm. As my Lord and Savior, mm. from now on, mm. I accept, mm. I accept that you were, you died for me, mm. and that you were raised from the dead, mm. and by the, and that by your grace I'm saved. Mm. Help me, Lord. Amen. In Jesus His name. Mm. Hallelujah. Release Hallelujah. your fire of prayer into these your children. Yes, Father. I receive mm. your, I receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Receive Jesus one on one mm. for this gift that is on you. Amen. Let the Lord show you his yes. goodness in the yes. land of the living. Yes. So that his word of 27 verse 13 of the book of Psalms mm. will become fulfilled for you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Each I one of these. Let them Release be a witness. this, your people. Amen. Into the power of your Holy Ghost. Amen. Release this, your children. Into the holiness of glory. Hallelujah. I thank you for the beginning of March, for the power thank by you, which you came through. Thank you, the Father. The power of Revelation chapter 5, verse Thank four. you, Lord. Give them unto you and to give, them, give them the power. Amen. Give them the wealth. Amen. Give them the wisdom. Give them the strength. Amen. Give the honor. Mm. Give them the glory. Mm. And give them your blessing. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Yes, let's go there and bear fruit. Let's bring many to the kingdom. 
and let our lives make a difference. Because you cannot encounter Christ and remain the same. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We shall take our offerings as we sit down. And allow me to make one or two announcements, then we shall be done. Have you been ministered to this day? Wasn't that powerful? One and one, one on one with Jesus. An encounter with the Lord Himself. Hallelujah. We must pray for you. Please come. It's not easy to minister, and you know, after ministration. So, church, why don't you come in front uh, stretch forth your hands? Pastors, let us surround this man of God. And uh, I just so I want you to commit him before the Lord. And after this, we shall be done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Stand up and stretch your hands towards this man of God. And um, he's, he's gracious enough. If you want to have time of prayer with him after the service, I'm sure he'll be available to do that. And um, for some of you, as he mentions you by name, I know. And Joseph says he'll pray for you. You can take that to the bank. He'll pray for you. And some of the experiences you've been experiencing is because somehow God has put this church in his heart. And every time we talk on phone, he says, how is so and so doing? How is so and so doing? And I remembered one thing. 2019, I remember. Or was it? Yeah, we just when we, we, we had started church. One of the prayers, you remember he told us to turn to the right and to the left, and to the north, and to the south, and we call people. And the revelation I got today, when Joyce was sharing her testimony, we were calling her from South Sudan. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, you know, we, are, we think we are only limited to the four corners, but God is going to bring them to the glory of God. Stretch forth. Um, this message we have sung, try to get a, a song, uh, okay, the, the song on the Samaritan woman. That's what I'm hearing. You know, you, you know the melodies. Uh, uh -huh, so, well, so, so try to, I don't know if you have that song or whether you can compose it, but that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. So, s s compose a song about uh, the Samaritan woman. Come and see the man who told me everything. And uh, you know, I don't know. Try. Father, we are so grateful for your word that has come forth through your servant this morning. Father, we receive the word with thanksgiving. And Father, we appropriate it into our, our lives right now. As you have told us, and as the servant of God has uh, confirmed, Lord, that indeed a one-on-one -on -one is what will bring a multiplication in this church. Even as you have said, in two years, this church shall double in, in membership. Thank you, Father, because this is going to happen with a one-on-one -on, -one on you. Father, thank you that indeed as our brother has refreshed us and the well, the rivers within our, 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 our stomachs, within, our, within us, are flowing out because of the word that has been imparted by our brother this morning. We praise you for the gift that you have given him of the word, the gift of uh, the scripture in his mind, the prophetic unction about him. Lord, I pray right now that what has gone forth, the virtues that he has expended in this church this morning will be restored and refreshed in the name of Jesus. We decree that the treasures of darkness shall be made available to him in a double portion in this year of double-double. And Father, whatever he has spent forth this morning will come back to him in double measure. Father, we decree that his wife is blessed, his children are blessed, his hands are blessed, his going out and coming forth are blessed. And Father, that when he sleeps at night, you shall continue to refresh him with rivers, rivers, rivers flowing through his mind and flowing through his life, Lord, that he may continue to refresh others 
even as he has refreshed us today. We pray, Father, your protection about him. And indeed, when the enemy comes, oh God, may their way be dark and slippery. May they not touch him in the name of Jesus. May those who, who bubble and his enemies turn their counsel into foolishness, oh God. And whatever the enemy uh, has put in front of him, Father, I pray that no weapon against him shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. So we declare a blessing to him today, Lord, that he will continue to bless others as he has blessed us today. We thank you for this opportunity. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God fellowship of the Holy Spirit forevermore place your hands on your head and declare purely goodness all the days of my life